And we're live. Stefan Spencer, welcome to the hey. LMP Site Clinic. Hey, good to have you. Well, it's good to be here. Thanks, Christoph, for the invite. Yeah, um, I was like looking very much forward to this uh, because we, you know, we know each other for I don't know ten years, and your book and your podcast, and uh, so much that yeah. has been going on over the years. So I really look forward to our to our examples. And welcome to all of you guys out there. If you don't know the format, it's fairly simple. Uh, people gave us their website, you know, in submissions previously, and then we look at these websites and. Because we have seen a couple hundreds or thousands of websites, we just show you and give you quick advice, quick takeaways on you know what you could fix, quick wins, low hanging fruits for your SEO. But quite often also technical SEO, maybe some UX, uh, and especially you know because we're the link research tools in your backlink profile. You know, should you clean up? What should you clean up? Do you have a negative SEO issue? Maybe. And yeah, if you have any questions, just post them in um, wherever you are in YouTube Live or in Facebook Live, and we are waiting for your questions right now. And with that, uh, I want to share my screen. Uh, by the way, uh, you can also share your screen, uh, Stefan, whenever you have something there to show uh, we can switch over so yeah you should see my screen with a high domain detox risk for this domain and how this works if you haven't seen it before we got this long list of i think um, uh, 32 websites submitted that we randomize and then just look at the first one here by gideon roberts anthony mcquillian side first gideon gideon yeah <laughs> um, so this guy is expert in facial surgery, breast surgery, and body contouring. Plastic surgery, a big thing in the U.S. And why, why just in the U.S.? Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, this is so U.S. You know, it starts with. I'm sorry. That's to a say very this. ethnocentric comment. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. You know, it starts with a guy being big here on the, on the on the hero screen i get it you know he's probably popular or rich or something but um i just don't see these sites in europe and in germany uh, or in german speaking markets so let's, let's just put it that way um wait do we have some info about the pain here no okay so plastic surgery in general is a fairly competitive if not highly competitive topic because the leads there and the clicks there I, i'm not aware of the current click prices for each keyword but i think they go into into hundreds you know similar to 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 lawyers and if you if you sign up for a liposuction here then uh, you would wait you sign up do you actually sign up somewhere or is this just calling? Um, That's a before good question. I Inquire, here we go. You have to go all the way down to go to this form, see the guy again, and then fill out a lot of stuff. Gender, email, treatment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of required fields. So yeah, you have to no, decide. No for... bueno. You know, if if you want to lower the barrier to entry and get yeah. more leads in, have a two-step process. If you want ten fields to be filled in, get the minimum, like say three fields filled in, and then have a step two. Because if they abandon, you can yeah. still contact them if you got their email address. I wouldn't even ask for their phone number in the first part of this process if you're going to do two-step. But that's the only optional field. The body lift, I have to decide on my on my actual treatment. And for me, I mean, maybe that's just me. Even worse, the clinic. I have to decide where I want to. Yeah. Get the treatment. I mean, maybe people know that, but it feels a little bit too much information upfront, and then a long text field, anyways, to write all that. Uh, yeah, you're expecting the. Uh, inquirer to be very savvy about what they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when it comes to the gender, yeah, maybe that's a doctor's thing. But how is that even required for an initial conversation? You would. Well, so anyways. is Gideon on the call? 
Is he, no, is no, he no. Um, oh, that's a good question here. Do we have because <laughs> we're only supposed to be uh, reviewing sites where the, the person's present, right? But we changed that because uh, okay. we had such a long backlog over the weeks and months actually that it was hard for people to decide to join or not. There were mm -hmm. people waiting many weeks and then they finally got it, but because of the randomizer, there is a uh, a certain chance only to see the site so we just changed that and uh got it okay yeah. um yeah you no know, and... crazy is that the inquiry like the, on the bottom of let's say the about page there's make an inquiry but yeah. there's no contact uh link in the top nav it's right just there's number. just this what so that's, that's, a, that's a usability issue <laughs> for sure yeah yeah, for not, sure. Not everybody wants to pick the phone up. Uh, they're not ready for that. They just want to fill out a, a short form. Yeah, right. And then here, when it comes to the to the facelifting, okay, that's lots of information. That's uh, uh, lots of YouTube videos. Oh, and then here on the bottom, inquire. I think it should be, you know, fixed here. Okay, let's look at that website in uh, Link Research Tools, Anthony. Yeah. Well, while you're pulling that up, I'll just make a couple other points. Uh, the title tags are really bare. The about page, for example, has a title tag of about Anthony McQuillan. That's it. No keywords there. And uh, also, the home page has that huge uh, image which takes up all the screen. And this is not an SEO tip. This is a conversion tip. Put some social proof uh, above the fold. Yeah. You don't even know who that person is. Is that Anthony? I would is that a so. stock photo? Well, yeah. Exactly. Is it a stock photo? Is that uh, a happy uh, client uh, or patient? Or oh, is it yeah. Anthony? We don't know. Oh, so is that no the result labeling? I get after facial sur fa facial <laughs> surgery? <laughs> Not sure. Okay. That, okay. So, uh, social proof above the fold, like mm -hmm. as seen on logos or certification logos, or both. Uh, those would be great. Uh, maybe a a short testimonial uh, above the fold. Maybe just five, yeah. ten, fifteen words. Not a huge. Uh, long treatise because you don't have a lot of room above the fold for social yeah. proof. So you want to be very uh, yeah. judicious about it. And then that image is just gratuitously large, make it a lot smaller and uh, take up less screen real estate with the imagery, add more text above the fold. The higher up in the page, the more weight that text is given by Google. So if it's way down in the footer, it's given the least amount of weight. If it's high up in the page, you know, big size font, doesn't matter if it's an H1 or an H6 or just a whatever font tag or something. What matters is the size on the rendered screen. And uh, is, is that uh, your, your most powerful call to action, your most powerful value proposition or explanation, because there's really, you've got three seconds. I call it the three second rule. You have three seconds to convey um, three things, really. One is, what the heck I is this? Right? So what do you do? What's your value proposition? So what do you do? Second is, what's in it for me? Everybody listens to WIIFM right? What's in it for me? And then thirdly, what's my next action? What do I do? There's no big button that says make an inquiry or uh, take a look at our portfolio of, of patient successes or anything like that. Yeah. Where am I supposed to go? Yeah. It should be here, like, you know, get started now or inquire now. Like, like this little yeah. button here should be right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the testimonials, the patient stories, uh, they're there. I mean, I mean, I'm not sure about this girl, but uh, down here, for sure. And and some of these, maybe even with smaller photos, could those should be on the homepage, I guess. Uh, to yeah, to yeah, before and after, very powerful, very compelling. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've yeah. I've had some uh, a clientele in this uh, in in this category in this niche. So uh, before and after photos are so critical mm -hmm. yeah All so right. we can move on to the uh, link profile 
Yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm starting a, a Lighthouse report here in the background. So we see some of the on-site technical SEO issues then maybe also with the site. When it comes to the link profile, um, I see a risk below a thousand. So that's good because everything above a thousand means you're having a penalty or, or being dragged down for a couple of keywords or folders already at least. Um, so that's not too bad, which surprises me a little bit because of the competitive nature of this industry. Yeah, we usually see a lot of negative SEO in that space. So it's very likely that this is maybe a, a, a a, a fresher site or a site that hasn't been around for too long. So or a site it, that just doesn't rank well and so it's not on the radar of the competition so they're not right. targeting it for a negative SEO attack. Yeah, exactly. Um, we could, you know, when we look at the anchor text, the second most popular anchor text is website. Yeah. Well, and how, while, first of all, Christoph, how yeah. many websites are actually linking to anthonymequillen.com? Oh, there's uh, 360 different websites, okay. 360 domains. That's not a whole lot for an established domain. It, on the other mm -hmm. hand, it's not nothing. But uh, what I'm surprised about is there is a bunch of co-UKs. You know, when we look at the TLDs, the, the links from the UK are 26%. Mm -hmm. And um, I, 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 until now, I, I didn't realize that this is actually a UK site. Is it? It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, this is a UK phone number. Okay, so that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, Bristol, UK. Yeah. So it's not a US thing. You're no. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was you just uh, projecting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So. That makes sense here. Uh, if it would be a US site, I would be surprised why 25% come from the UK. So, But that was just me getting confused. And uh, when we look at these domains, there's no disabout ones here in the filter. So we probably didn't get that in the preparation. When you sign up for the site clinic and you have a disbar file, make sure you send it. In this case, it doesn't matter because the risk isn't too high. But sometimes we see a too high risk, and then you know a week later or so, uh, we hear, oh, we actually forgot to send you the disbar file. And uh, whenever you look at a at a website, a link audit, a site audit, you want to make sure you take the disavowed links into account, or actually you subtract them from your audit because they wouldn't count anymore if they're spammy. And now. When we look at this filter here with the active links, it's actually a lot less. So only 108 domains still have active links. And here's the, the explanation for that. In link research tools, we also look at data that these 25 data sources where we get the link data from say they have links. But often the data is a week, a month, or sometimes five years old. Um, well, actually, quite often. And this is why Link Research Tools does a verification and a recrawling of all these links. And what we just found out is that only a third of the links that we thought we had are still there, which is, you know. Um, That's a pretty quite... small number. Right, right. Um, for a very competitive niche, that would mean that it'd be hard for, uh, for Anthony to rank. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, what this could also mean is that there has been some kind of link rental or some kind of link building campaign, you know, in, in regards to, to maybe some bulk linking or bulk link spamming related to that, that these links were later pulled off or that these uh, links were taken down or um, that two thirds of the backlinks actually come from scraper websites that usually only have a very short life. So we could look mm -hmm. into that a little bit uh, later, but what this means is that the number of links and the, well, the overall backlink profile is not too exciting. Overall, when we look at the page power trust, we see 95% of these backlinks, these remaining from these remaining 108 websites, 95 have no power trust at all. So That's terrible, right? They That's, are uh, actually not valuable, not trustworthy, it, not important. Exactly. And that's the vast, vast majority of the linking pages. Exactly. And when we yeah. click on that one, uh, you know, I just clicked on that 
95% thing. There are some lower risk links here, but they are all on pretty, well, a directory of the Bristol Post about surgeons is, you know, when we pull up this website here, the specific page, um, yeah, the, this is um, an old school directory that. Yeah, that's not going to be helpful. And it has, oh, you have to click to show the number. What's this about? I've seen this on other websites too. Do you have an explanation I, why websites do that? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, an old school tactic. Doesn't work anymore. But it was done to prevent scrapers from building a, uh, a phone number database uh, off of all your hard work. Oh. So if you're, let's say, a, a phone book company, which I actually mm. had a phone book company as a, <laughs> as a client, superpages.com was the client. Yeah many 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 years ago and uh, yeah that was a prevention technique to uh, okay. thwart the the scrapers okay get it all right oh that's a really outdated cheap i mean you got the phone numbers here even in different formats i got the local format i got the international yeah, it totally format. doesn't work it totally doesn't work <laughs> yeah it's ridiculous it just makes it harder for the user Exactly, exactly. I was confused first. And I think, you know, from the layout, we see that this is apparently not made for users. And this is what we also see in the power and the trust of these links. Um, yeah. That's I a great would, point, too, is yeah. when you have a directory, it's not all directories are bad. Most are. Yeah. The, the di differentiating factor is, th is this web directory made for webmasters? Or is it made for users? If it's made for webmasters, you're definitely in a world of hurt. You don't want that link because um, it's not meant for general consumption. It's very easy for uh, the algorithms to to see that mm -hmm. and to you know treat you accordingly. So yeah, yeah just bear that in mind. The link status. Yeah, eighty percent of these are follow links. So we now have very questionable links that have no power, no trust, and are follow. So potentially, the if these were paid links, um, Google could you know dish out a penalty for one of these pretty useless links that are useless anyways, but could also trigger them because you know that website was maybe known for selling links. And of course, these high risk links here on find us here or smartguy.com uh, would potentially be the first ones I would disavow to take out. Um, now, Christoph, yeah? do, you, do you tend to recommend folks not just disavow, but also do outreach using the Pitchbox integration to yeah. you know, kind of demand a link removal from the webmaster? Yeah, it really depends on uh, the case because sometimes users are just uh, um, trying to get out of a penalty. And we found that this works just by disavowing alone. On the other hand, it poses the problem that if you have these links still there, um, they spread like fungus to other websites from scrapers. So yeah. if you don't demand a takedown, uh, chances are that they just multiply and the problem doesn't go away. And um, we can solve that by, you know, keeping the disavowing and keeping the profile refreshing. And then you find, you know, you get more warnings and maybe here the risk would build up. Uh, so in general, if this is your main business, if this is your money site, then I would, of course, do both and try an outreach and then try uh, I try the outreach and then disavow immediately, yeah. Yeah. regardless of the response. Um, yeah, my, my position on yeah. it is even if you get a single digit uh, positive response rate on the link removals, it's worth mm -hmm. doing because that uh, yeah. conveys to the algorithm a, a, a sort of a mea culpa, like, okay, I yeah. was in the wrong, or even if it wasn't, maybe it was my competitor who yeah. uh, targeted me with a negative SEO attack. I'm letting the algorithms know that I'm not going to just sit idly and take the easy route. I'm, I'm going to try and clean it up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And what we also see is we got this most popular keyword website here again, um, which that's very strange. <laughs> no, it, it's it's from the from the directories. The directories have some listing, yeah. and then they just link here in the paragraph. Well, it's abnormal, is what I'm saying. 
it's oh, yeah. more typical for the brand name or the URL of the website uh -huh. to be the most popular anchor, not right. the word website. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So that is something I would maybe you know look deeper. Yeah, just gen gen generally yeah. speaking, the yeah. concept here that I try to convey to my clients is that we don't want an unnatural looking link profile. And what's unnatural if there's lack of diversity in the uh, types of sites, the themes of sites, the TLDs, the uh, the trust and importance uh, scores of the linking pages and of the websites and uh, a whole bunch of other criteria that you can see within link research tools. If a lot of that stuff is not uh, diverse, that looks unnatural. And thus you're just kind of setting yourself up to get uh, at least un, uh, unwanted scrutiny from the search engines, if not uh, a potential penalty or an algorithmic adjustment. Exactly. I was just clicking back and forth here um, to a filter I set up before to look for all the active links for links that actually have a source page power trust. And I only saw 30 anchor texts on five domains. And I thought something is broken here, but that is it. You know, I was tricked a little bit by looking into this uh, on, on relative numbers before, where we saw that uh, the page power trust are for, what was that zero? Hang on, when we say equals zero, Sorry. When we look at all of them, 95% of them have a zero. When you look at that in absolute numbers, you actually see there's only right. 50 left. Yeah? And that, I think, is the root problem of this. This website yeah. needs... And it's not 50 websites, it's 50 pages. 50 pages, exactly. I think it was five domains when we look at so power trust again. So our uh, source page, power trust. Source page power trust being greater than zero are five domains. Yeah, that's only. it. And that's it. And that, from my perspective, is also the explanation why the risk is fairly low and also why the website doesn't rank for much else than maybe Anthony's name and uh, maybe some, some long tail phrases. Right. Yeah. And so uh, a proper link building campaign that um, starts to build up a, 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 a stronger backlink profile here than all these. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of anchor texts here, but they're all on, on, on powerless sites. Yeah, no power, no trust. Yeah. And yeah, with that, I think we can close this case here for now. Uh, so just a, a link building campaign first because uh oh yeah we got a lighthouse report here on mobile hmm oh no this is mobile not good yeah it's not 11 good. 11 seconds to the first paint and 15 seconds to the time to interactive that means when you load this on your phone you need to wait for 15 seconds before you can scroll around not good. And I'm guessing it talks about in all these warnings here about the images, about render blocking sources, unused JavaScript, lots of things to fix. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what you'll find if there's enough traffic on the site, it'll tell you that uh, it either does or doesn't pass core web vitals, because uh, that would be based on the Chrome user experience reports so or real Chrome users. But uh, you can still see that it won't pass Core Web Vitals because one of the three metrics in Core Web Vitals is LCP, largest mm -hmm. contentful paint, and that's 9.5 yeah. seconds. That's in red. All the time to, to interactive uh, is 14 point. Yeah, that's these terrible scores. Um, so the LCP and the, the CLS, which is fine. That's in green, cumulative layout shift. You, you don't have to use Lighthouse to, to see this. You can just... Uh, pull up page speed insights 
which is a free Google and, and, tool and you don't have to be technical at all. You just paste in a URL and then I'll tell you uh, yeah. whether you're passing core web vitals or not, which is a thing that you need to know to, to be uh, on top of, because if you don't pass core web vitals, you're going to get demoted uh, sometime next year is what Google's official line is. But, who knows? It could come as early as November. Is my, my guess. Uh, actually, when they when they announced that it would come next year, a week or two later, there was another core update that was very mysterious. And what I think is what they did at that time is already uh, test some core web vitals in some verticals. Um, mm. You know, they don't have to to use the same mechanics in every industry the rules are different in every country in every language for every topic even you know when we talk about uh, cosmetic surgery there are different topics so for some um the the, the lcp could be more important than the others uh, even yeah, for this that's a stuff. that's yeah. a great point because yeah. uh when we're talking about ymyl which is your money or your life mm -hmm. can't get anything more your life than going under the knife yeah, right? I so agree. Google puts I you agree. in touch with the wrong cosmetic surgeon or plastic surgeon, and uh, they're currently being sued for malpractice and everything, and you end up dying on the table. That's Google's fault, partially. So they don't want to uh, take any risks there. They want to uh, be very conservative when it comes to, to topics that are YMYL uh, related. Yeah, actually, just googling his name here to see if he's real. Yeah, it looks real. Okay. Yeah, so pages like this certainly help. On the U Clinic. Oh, here's another clinic. Oh, that's not him. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Probably a different um, lead gen site. That, uh, or he could be part of another clinic or uh, come in occasionally to some uh, yeah. colleagues' clinic. Uh huh. Yeah, for me, this is a little bit confusing already. I mean, if you if you Google him and then you end up somewhere else and you don't see his name, yeah, mem membership news. Hmm. Yeah, wh wh whose ever site this is has the same problem with the uh, uh, the, the hero image. We don't yeah. know who that person is. Probably a, a stock photo, but it could be a happy uh, patient uh, with a positive outcome. Yeah, yeah I guess. Anna, I... Anna uh, posted a comment uh, to that effect that yeah. uh, if it's... The, a, a client in the photo, it's really good to have that person's name on it or at least to label the fact that it's a patient or a client and not the uh, uh, the staff or, or the the surgeon. Right. Yeah. And just because we look at this wall of text here, I think this is just an update that they do any that they don't do any in-person consultations, which makes sense. But I'm not sure if this that shouldn't be the most prominent text on the page, and it is. It's it's the first text you see, and it makes the yeah. page Don't go here. more about COVID-19 than it yeah. is about yeah. getting yeah. a positive uh, surgical outcome. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Well, we should probably All move right. on to another All site. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At this yeah, rate, I think always... we'll be done by, um, I don't know, uh, six hours from now. <laughs> this is why we have the backlog. Right. Uh, Lauren Proctor with Benchmade Modern here. Um, okay. So it ends 9 8 at midnight. One ten percent of the best online sofa. What's an online sofa? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's in uh, one of those virtual worlds. Maybe it's Minecraft or something. You get a... Oh, yeah. No, for, <laughs> for, uh, for, for the other. For the, yeah. Uh, enter your email above and we'll send you this. For your castle, for your online castle. <laughs> exactly. No, thanks. I love paying the full price. Oh, yeah. Choose your collection. 
I could give a whole spiel about uh, improving the pop ups, but I'll uh, I'll just I'll just say go to my episode on Marketing Speak, which is my one of, one of my two podcasts where I interviewed Syed Belki. He's the founder of Opt In Monster. It's a really good episode about pop up best practices. Actually, speaking of Opt In Monster, submitted a case study on their site about NeilStrauss.com, which I I helped Neil. Uh, improve his pop-up and he got significant improvements uh that's a fun one you actually google that um neil strauss pop-up case study i'll show you a, a before and after uh, i don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole but pop-ups can really make a huge difference yeah it's the first result there uh -huh. pop-ups normally are annoying but if they're good they can just be a substantial uh, in, in, increase in your lead flow or your sales volume. So the before is in red, and and then that's the after. Yeah, see, I see emotions. I see the funny kid screaming here. This is uh, making me smile. And, and already. notice there's no name and email uh, box to fill in yet. So this is yeah. a giving pop up instead of a taking pop up. A mm -hmm. taking pop up is I'm only going to give you some value after I get some information from you. And mm -hmm. then uh, I didn't like the color scheme. It's like red triggers the uh, the flight or flight response, the amygdala, and it just seems so disingenuous. Do you see there? My undying respect is one of the things you'll get by providing your name and email. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, really? Is that what you're going to get? <laughs> and then the worst button verbiage uh, you could possibly have is submit. You don't want to have a submit button. Have it in uh, no. first person. Have it, uh, you know, so yes, count me in or give me my free report or whatever it is should be yeah. in first person. And yeah, so big difference, as you can see in the results in the bottom yeah. there. Uh, what was it? 137% increase mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. response rate or something like that. Yeah, I, I keep saying nobody wakes up in the morning to submit his email to a newsletter uh, list. Right. Yeah, well, I want well, more. New, I want more newsletters. Said no one ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So, but um, I think when it comes to pop-ups, we're done. And I suddenly, I, I clicked somewhere here, and then I. Did you get another one? No, no, but okay, I good. ended up on this, uh, where was this, collection rocks? Because that's I another thing that happens this. a lot of times is you end up getting more pop-ups in the same session, and that's just a no-no. You don't want to annoy people. if they And it should be on exit intent. It shouldn't be a timed pop-up, but when yeah. they're indicating that they're leaving the site, heading towards the back button, you, you trigger the pop-up then. And if uh, they come back to the site in the same session, you don't trigger another pop-up. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's look at the SEO. <laughs> site. <laughs> um, w w what I'm thinking just now is, um, where am I? W what's the name of the company again? Isn't there a logo? Isn't there supposed to be a logo somewhere? Oh, that's funny. Even the the section of the site you're in is kind of hard to figure out because it's part of the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. Um, hang on. Here is a a little X. No, there is no it logo behind help. that. I can't even I can't even read what the nav items are on the top nav. It's so small. Yeah, let me zoom in a little bit. It's really it's really um small fonted. Yeah. This is hundred percent. Yeah, this, is, this should be redesigned. Yeah, that the navigation is about the same size as the normal text. And the normal text is really small. small small yeah. and it looks like in the link research tools website with lots of technical details uh and not so much what is this a guy working stock photo of a guy working on some yeah so this is another thing that is not related to seo but i'll just very quickly say that uh read the book building a story brand by donald miller the story brand sb7 framework is all about the hero being the visitor not you not the guy building the, the couch or the person selling the couch or the company that yeah. uh, is selling the couch or the founder. There he is. Yeah, <laughs> it, ah, he is, it, yeah. 
Yeah, it. I mean, it's fine for an about page to have information about the founder, but yeah. the hero of the the journey should always be the visitor. So you're not Luke Skywalker. The visitor, the the user, the potential customer is Luke Skywalker. You're Yoda or you're Obi-Wan Kenobi. And you've got the map, you've got the plan to how, how to destroy the Death Star. You are just helping them to rise to greatness. And so when it's all about you, it's not all about them. And there you you have this disconnect. And, and that's another yeah. thing I'm, I'm noticing about this site. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And here we get a form with lots of fields again. And swatches. Are they all required, though? I mean, that's a lot of fields, and you want to cut that down Street significantly. Address, but... phone number required, postal yeah. code, city. Yeah, this is a this is too way too much. We want just Street a few address. fields and yeah. almost nothing. Maybe just the email address is the re required field. That's it. Yeah, May yeah, but you know all these things. You know the region, the shipment address, where you can get this free swatch kit. If I really wanted, I would fill it out on the next page. And then we yeah. got the email address already, as you said before. Exactly. I see this a lot. A printout. What's a printout? Uh, wait, something is off. 10% off until August 27? Um, uh, that was uh, last apparently week. Of, right? <laughs> apparently, <laughs> this might be next year. <laughs> oh, oh. Are you? Oh, that. That's possible. That's confusing. Probably me. not possible. Yeah, I mean, no, I don't. No. Think, I think I'm just being funny. I think that it really <laughs> was from last week. Oh, that doesn't look good. And the previous site, I think, had a copyright of 2019. In September, you shouldn't have the copyright from the last year. So this one here is okay. But these are the little details that put me yeah. off. And the, the yeah, that's another thing too. When you look at a website from a user's perspective, and you see things like broken links, broken images, a copyright a year that's from three years ago, that erodes trust. So I'm less likely to buy from you. And it also is a signal for the search engines because if it erodes trust in the user, it, it'll erode trust for the algorithm too. Right. Mm -hmm. So broken images, broken links, all that should be uh, attended to and, and monitored on a regular basis. Uh, mm -hmm. there's this philosophy called broken windows, uh, back in the nineties. Uh, the, uh, I think it was, uh, mayor Rudy Giuliani did a big cleanup of New York city. This is written up in Malcolm oh. Gladwell's book, the tipping point. And what mm -hmm. was the tipping point for the city of New York was when they chased after the people that were jumping turnstiles in the subways, when they cleaned up the graffiti in the neighborhoods and they uh they fixed the broken windows that sent a message to the whole neighborhood and, and people coming in and out of it that hey this is uh being looked after and so the by addressing the smaller crimes and, and uh you know that, that was very obviously addressed because the lack of graffiti and and turnstile jumpers and so forth meant that the big crimes, the homicides and so forth, weren't happening anymore. Oh, so pay attention to the broken windows on your website is my bottom line on that. <laughs> yeah. Fix I them. think we, we would see some of them here. Um, redirect chains on the target pages. 99, what? 99 pages on this website are going through redirect chains. So there has been a migration in the past, which is problematic well also, it could be a uh, misconfiguration on the part of the the web developer or mm -hmm. the sysadmin because mm -hmm. uh you'll see things like a, uh, a redirect handling http to https another redirect handling www to non-www or vice versa and then another one for trailing slash to non-trailing slash or vice versa and so forth and and these would stack on top of each other uh because they just didn't know what they didn't know about seo they didn't realize you don't want chains you want one hop and that's it for a redirect mm -hmm. ideally yeah. you don't want any redirects i mean it's not terrible if you have a redirect but it's not ideal so if you can yeah. avoid them uh do so 
And then if you redirect into a 404, into a missing URL, of course, that's even worse, right? Mm -hmm. Target pages. 1,359 source pages linked to a target that doesn't exist anymore. Or in other words, um, there might be some risky links, but also some good links pointing to pages that don't exist anymore. And that screams for a, um, a fix. You need to clean that up and fix a um, backlink profile to point to actual pages, not necessarily the home page, but certainly not to an error page. And this warning here uh, is part of the protect module because it says 1100 or, or at least uh, 200 of them are good and 1100, 1200 of them are actually toxic links. So yeah. while you want to fix backlinks, pointing to good pages, you want good links to go to good pages. If you do that in bulk and let's say redirect everything that has an error like we did in the past, then you also inherit a lot of toxicity from these spammy links, which you don't want. So what we suggest is to first disavow and then redirect to first do the cleanup. And we need some cleanup here with a 2,400 detox risk. That website for sure is being held back by some of these toxic links. Maybe not with a manual action completely, but for sure with Google Penguin 4 for certain directories, for certain folders, um, yeah. for certain keywords, maybe topics uh, or, or maybe single pages. Do you believe Google's uh, assertion that they always tell you inside of Google Search Console if you've been uh, penalized with a manual action? Do you believe that? No, no. That would be fantastic. Actually, the, the, the taking that down, they're... Uh, slowly go to um, a system as it was you know when you and i started where we didn't know anything where the rankings just went away because all these signals you know the manual actions that the drops you know the drops in google penguin were fantastic i mean not for the websites but we saw a website dropping to zero so we knew exactly where to look at and yeah. in 2016 that got harder because the slow demotions um you cannot be so sure if there is a penalty. And if you take away this feedback, then the observer slowly, but for sure, has the problem to understand what's going on. And this is what yeah, we see. It makes for it the almost last... impossible yeah. to reverse yeah. engineer. Exactly. So this is why Link Research Shoes and Link Detox, uh, we, we, we have a benefit of having been around for so long because we collected these signals and made our data, trained our machine learning, starting with the first Google Penguin penalties in 2012 that were all a, a sharp drop. Um, nowadays, starting nowadays, and a lot of other systems started 2016 or even later, uh, have a hard time reverse engineering what's going on. And because of that showing which links cause a problem, right? Right. Compared yeah, Google us. doesn't want to give you too much information to help you. So if yeah. they can obscure it, make it less obvious, then yeah. uh, you, you're kind of be, you're gonna be flying blind and they like that. So yeah. like if uh, you're doing all this great virtuous uh, high trust link building and you're wondering why is it taking so long, it's weeks and weeks, yeah. For me to feel the impact of all this hard work, it's because Google wants to dial that down so that you're not getting immediate feedback. Exactly. Yeah, so some of these filters here are familiar for those who of you who watched the site clinics before. We got our popular wallpaper spam, scraper spam for, for HD wallpapers. They are not everywhere, but many websites have this, and we can safely disavow these 173 domains here in one click. Unless you're Whatever. a wallpaper site. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, unless you're a wallpaper site, maybe. But then when you look at these <laughs> extensions here, uh, TKCFGA, these are the typical uh, spam domain extensions, GH, G. -G GQ, TK, ML, CF, these are uh, free domains where you can um, get domains for free or for uh, little send amounts. And because of that, they're used by scrapers for, you know, to make a penny uh, per visitor or something. Um, but they cause problems for the websites where they steal the content from. So these, web, these domains are hosting your content. They are duplicating your content, your images, and quite often linking back to you. And that's not good for your own rankings, but for their rankings. Um, so I, I've had clients uh, tell me that th they go through the trouble of uh, submitting 
uh, DMCA takedown notices mm -hmm. to these scraper sites. And I'm like, why do you do that? That's a waste of your time. It's like playing whack-a-mole. They're just going to uh, <laughs> exactly, yeah. spin up a bunch of other sites and you, you can't stop them. Uh, it's just wasting your time. In fact, uh, uh, they might like a good challenge and then they'll come after you in spades then. Uh, yeah. Like, oh, this is another thing too that's related. Never ever pay off uh, a, a, ransom. A, a, a ransom, a spammer who says, yeah, I'll take that link down, but you got to pay me 50 bucks. Because then you are a target. Yeah, you, they'll yeah. spin up a whole bunch of other websites that will, of course, be them behind the scenes, and but you won't know it. And then they'll yeah. keep yeah. demanding more and more money to take down the links. We've actually had that for a couple of years already in our LRT certified group. There was a certain name or or a group of names. Um, that made a ton of money with a whole network of sites. And when you send a link removal request, he came back with a link uh, for $5, I'm going to remove it. And next week, thousands of these type of directories were linking to that site. And of course, that would be a lot more money. And then he started negotiating for you know bulk discounts to remove it from a thousand websites for let's say not 5,000, but 2,000. And so that's really bad. And we um, we have seen there's, this. There's a special place everything. in hell for that person, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, but on the other hand, we, we collected these lists fairly quick and of course trained our system. And uh, they would show up as a risk level of uh, two or three thousand today, and can safely be disavowed. And that's what I suggest uh, to do with most of the links that we see here. You know, we see some scraper links with a dot that we could still disavow from uh, unbelievable eleven hundred twenty-four domains, all of them. If you have a link with a dot, there's a chance of 99.999% that it's one of these scrapers. And um, if you would disavow this one magic link that's still in there that doesn't, um, you know, isn't visible right now, we would have an automated signal here in, uh, in the domain overview, where we would in a few minutes um, pop up and say, you disavow a link that is probably okay but because it was in the whole bulk, we didn't see it before. So after disavowing, you could still undisavow it anyways before uploading it to Google Search Console. And what a lot of um, people don't know is even if you disavow a link with Google, you can also take that back. You can, if you do it by hand, you can remove it from the disavow file. The magic, the problem ha happens there that Google doesn't notice that it's undisavowed. And this is where Link Detox Boost comes in. Um, some strong websites get crawled on a regular basis, but uh, a lot of websites are not being crawled at all for weeks or months. And that's where uh, Link Detox Boost comes in, especially for, for spammy links or for toxic links. We make sure that these links get crawled because only then the disavow command is being interpreted by Google. They calculate it in real time. And what they mean by that is the moment they crawl it. But if the page doesn't get crawled. There's no signal, no change visible. Um, yeah, and um, we already see that we are outdated here a little bit from all the disavows. I would go and you know disavow virus links. Nobody wants virus links. We see a no negative SEO pattern here for another 1,300 links that you can fairly blind, blindly trust us to disavow because we've never seen any good coming out of those you know patterns that we flag here as negative seo patterns and now when we look at the total domains um wait that's a uh, three thousand domains we already have two thousand that's two thirds this is about 2099 mm -hmm. yeah not very very exciting backlink profile either I, I i get a feeling that this one because of the industry is just subject to you know scraper spam maybe negative seo uh patterns that come with it it could be some collateral damage you know because 
sometimes it's just bulk negative SEO and not specifically targeted to that website. But when we look at those that are not disavowed yet, what is left uh, here in Page Power Trust? Same problem, 95% of these source pages have no power, no trust. They're rubbish. Yeah. We could, yeah, we could look at them now and say, okay, judging by the trust here, um, we have a zero. And from the risk, there are some where we haven't assessed a specific risk yet. Um, when we just open up one of these pages here, we'll probably see something Hmm. What is Website this? designed in 2002. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like. I mean, I have to say I'm running a, a pie hole here in the background. So a lot of the ads are not showing. It makes our show faster and uh, sometimes, you know, it's not as uh, exhausting to, to yeah. look at. Yeah. Um, look at some others here. So the bottom line for a situation like this where you have very low trust and the vast majority of the links are like a zero is not only a cleanup process involving the disavow creation and, and I would say also to do a link outreach using the outreach connection with, uh, with Pitchbox, Pitchbox to, yeah. to demand those webmasters remove the link. Uh, I would also concurrently be doing some virtuous link building, go so after high trust links. So before yeah. you waste your time on building a link, if it's a low trust website, it's not worth it because no. you, you, you need to kind of over, uh, uh, overdo it in terms of trust and, and, and importance. All right. So yeah. power trust should be high on the sites that you uh, that you outreach to, especially the trust component. So LRT trust should be yeah. high. And uh, it's pretty rare that you'll get links just on your own from higher trust than importance. In other words, LRT trust is higher than LRT power. But if yeah. you specifically do that kind of link building, and it's doable, it's possible you're going to be in a whole other uh, position this this time next year. Yeah. And I think this is a legit business that uh, just needs some some help. Yeah, it looks legit. Yeah, it looks yeah, legit. Yeah. And that's another thing too, as uh, I mentioned this before, is uh, social proof like this. This is a great mm -hmm. press page that conveys that uh, they are legitimate. Yeah, but that I should only be on the it. on the homepage. Exactly, you have those logos uh, with as seen on label, and then those logos shouldn't link directly to Wall Street Journal, etc., but to the press page on your own site. Maybe it's somewhere here. No. Oh, that's another thing too is you don't want to have uh, the carousels, the sliders <laughs> like this. Those are conversion killers. I, I can, you know, I can barely touch it. Uh, my mo my mouse settings. Yeah, but they rotate uh, automatically, right? Yeah, but at least we see the logo here for the first time. And this, uh, what I thought was a shopping cart here is actually part of the logo, um, the icon, apparently. Oh, another, another them, not me. All right, so. Try out worry. Oh, hey, you can try this out for 100 days. Why do I have to scroll through all of that to learn that? You know, that would be a value proposition that I want to read up here. If you are offering me to show to, to use this couch for three months, okay, sign me up. This is uh, yeah, a lot of the mattress companies do that, They'll okay, have a, like purple Casper, those uh, sorts of mattress companies. You buy it online. Mm -hmm. And you try it for 30, 60, 90 days, and no questions asked, you can return it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, standard. That's still a big commitment for, for me to make, right? To have a couch delivered. Yeah. A sofa. 
All right. So then let's look at a third side. Whoa, it's been an hour already. I you know. Still have time for, you, you still have time for another one? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So here's Lenny Robbins with the lifenetinsurance.com. Oh, another, another tough vertical. <laughs> yeah, well, life insurance for sure. Life net insurance solutions. Another YMYL, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the, the thing about YMYL, which is an acronym that Google actually uses, they use it in their quality rater guidelines uh, where they're talking about EAT, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness, is you dial up the scrutiny if in terms of EAT, if you're in that category of YMYL, which includes life insurance, includes mm -hmm. disability insurance, it includes uh, pension funds and um, uh, investment advice and uh, the stuff we were talking about earlier related to going under the knife and all that. Of course, mm -hmm. all that's in YMYL. So you're being held to a higher standard. You yeah. need to have even more EAT than the typical website. And we can talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> is there a broken image uh, showing up or what is that? Uh, okay. Never mind. I'm trying to find my way around that one. Um, I can chat to Lenny Robbins. So that's... Oh, look. It's, go it's, on, it's on Google+. Plus. <laughs> what? I wonder if they have... Scroll down to the bottom. Did you see the, the, the G Plus logo? Oh, on gosh. Plus. I wonder That's if they're big. on Friendster as well. <laughs> <laughs> or MySpace. Yeah. Or, or GeoCities. My first <laughs> website was a GeoCities, 1900-something. Uh, so if you click on the G Plus uh, logo, oh, uh, yeah. it takes you to 404 era, right? Oh, God. I, th I closed it. Let me open it again. Yeah, the G plus uh, gave me an ugly interstitial here talking about yeah, there we long go. available for consumer. Now that's one link too much. I yeah, have we, to don't wanna do <laughs> we don't want to do that. We don't want that there. And, 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 and what I'm wondering about is, you know, do I really need a Twitter account from uh, Lenny here down there? I, I know it's kind of well, okay, so this, standard this is, it is standard practice. Here's why you want to do that. If you think about the first page in Google, the SERPs for your brand being the first impression, mm -hmm. not the first time they come to your website, but the first time they do a Google search and they come across your brand, that is the first impression. And if you stack the deck in, in, in your favor, in terms of if I type in your brand name, and it's all your social accounts, it's it's your uh, Crunchbase profile, your About Me profile, your uh, About.me, and even better if it's like you've been covered or, or at least mentioned in mainstream media articles, like the Benchmade Modern example uh, from mm -hmm. a few minutes ago. Yeah. If that Wall Street Journal article showed up and on page one, if I Googled for Benchmade Modern, yeah. That'd be amazing, right? So you want to curate yeah. the first page of results. And uh -huh. a lot of times, this is uh, not something that folks know how to do. So it's super simple to just link to all your social accounts from your footer, uh, at least do it on your homepage, so that you can give that some juice mm -hmm. to rank along yeah. with your, 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 your homepage. Yeah. So that's that one. Sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, uh, I see Lenny even has two or maybe even more uh, Twitter profiles. So this one, as seen on CBS News, Fox, NBC. Here, yeah, I guess so we need that the, those as seen on on the on the homepage, like we described. So let, uh, before we go down this rabbit hole, let's <laughs> kind of re, <laughs> refocus on SEO. Let's look back yes, at the yes, at the yes, homepage. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. What, what do you um, think about all of uh, the text on like okay, so scroll down a bit. What do you think about a wall of text like that? Me personally, I don't like it. I don't think it's it's meant for users to consume. And if it's keyword stuffed uh, copy as well, that just 
signals to everybody that this is not meant for human consumption. So look at all the repetition of life insurance in that second paragraph. LifeNet is a family of uh, run business, been offering personalized insurance services, including life insurance for seniors, baby boomers, Fi final expense, life insurance, universal life insurance, whole life insurance, life insurance, life insurance, life insurance, life insurance. You know, a, a little bit of keyword stuffing there. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would be, I like would be okay with it. I would be okay with that still if it would answer the damn question that's up here. Why LifeNet insurance? Why? Because you have all of that? Because I have the biggest portfolio to select from? It, I don't see that here. I see, well, this keyword stuffing. And yeah. I see, well, Mr. and Mrs. Robbins. Um, is that why? Because uh, of the cute picture? Right. So remember the three-second rule. What's in it for me is part of that, W-I-I-F-M. Yeah. So the what's in it for me is about the value proposition and it also connects with the internal problem that i'm having the unspoken problem so the obvious problem i need life insurance but the unspoken problem the internal problem uh this i'm i'm also uh pulling from uh, uh from donald miller's book uh, building a story brand is the internal problem is about your fears, your frustrations, your wants, your aspirations, the things that drive you that you don't speak about. Like, for example, maybe you think that life insurance salespeople are really kind of scammy. <laughs> they're kind of like used car salespeople. You, you don't want to deal with them. They're, they're just going to sell you something that gives them the highest commission. Of and course. it has uh, no benefit for you other than enriching their pockets. So right. if, if that's the internal problem that I'm fearful of that happening to me, if you addressed you as in Lenny addressed the internal problem that I have about not trusting these life insurance people, because I think they're going to sell me something that, uh, gives them the highest commission. That's not in my best interest. Yeah. You, you just hit that front and center that's going to be amazing. I'm going to, I'm going to feel more relatedness to you. I'm going to uh, see you as the preeminent expert who has my best interests at heart, but instead it's just life insurance, life insurance, life insurance, life insurance, a bunch of yeah. keyword spam in there. Oh, and here's a free burial insurance quote too, just in case. Uh, yeah. These are exactly my objections and uh, they're not, been taken away at all here from a conversion standpoint um also you know these logos here come on what's wrong with uh, my screen or or they, they look like like really weird like yeah the fox one's pixelated, pixelated. I, yeah just one kind of best practice again it's not seo advice but when you have logos like that don't make them uh full color like that gray them out make them grayscale so that they're not as prominent because you don't want people clicking on them. You want people clicking on the next action. What is the next action for somebody on a site like this? It's to uh, schedule an appointment, right? There should be an appointment funnel. And, and in order to uh, get over their objections, you wanna preempt their objections, address their internal problems as I described, so that they're willing to have a call with you and not feel like, oh, it's just going to be a sales session and I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just in case you actually want to get in touch, here's everything to fill out, smoke or tobacco. I think for the no, there is a question missing if you ever smoked before to fill out the form. But this, this is almost like the application already. The, like the life insurance application and um if this is a, a actually a lead selling site a lead collection site to sell these leads off then this would make maybe more sense but still maybe. you'd want to do it as a two-part process because yeah. uh that's too daunting you're asking yeah. too much too soon it's like walking up to uh, a, a person at the bar and saying hey you want to get married <laughs> like, i don't exactly. even know your name yet like slow down yeah. there bucko so you want to take it in stepwise fashion. And, uh, you know, I, I, I now want to see, you know, CBS, Lenny Robinson, CBS. Mm -hmm. Where is he? Uh, 
Well, he should be on the media page or the press page of the website so that I don't have to dig around as, as a user to verify that the social proof is legit. You know, make it so easy that if they click on that CBS logo, it takes them right to the press page, even to the part of the page that has that CBS TV appearance. Even better, have a, uh, a, a, a YouTube embed of that TV appearance that's on your channel, not right. theirs, because they'll pull that off eventually. Yeah. Old yeah. news eventually, uh, you know, gets removed off of the different CBS aff or TV affiliate websites. But uh, grab that. Use a, a service like uh, TVVideoClips.com. Shortly after you've had the TV appearance, sixty bucks, and you get the 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 video clip in high definition. Upload it to your YouTube channel. And that's what you embed on your press page. Yeah. Oh, let's look at a link profile. That's a toxic one too. Yeah. That needs some cleanup. Uh, 13, 1,400 domains. Yeah, as you said, anything over a thousand is no bueno. And yeah. uh, and I, I just uh, signed up a client two weeks ago, and his uh, his detox risk is a forty five hundred. Wow! Yeah, yeah, forty five hundred. Uh, it doesn't happen often that I see a site like that, but when I do, well, he's in really the he's in personal finance vertical, so super competitive. All of his buddies, uh, you know, in the FinCon space, have similar problems where they're yeah. being targeted, negative SEO attacks, and they're and then you you're trying to rank for keywords like. Uh, uh, debt consolidation and stuff like that. And yeah, it's yeah. super hard. Oh yeah, I just disavowed uh, 1,800 toxic links with very high risk, just in bulk. Um, we might have 500 money keywords on weak domains that we could review here. And we will probably see what we saw before also for the link uh, profiles before with uh, really weak domains where the question is you know do they help at all and if they don't help then um find jeep life insurance six smoker term life insurance all these weird directories and scraper sites from uh poland and xyc and, and other tlds that are often yeah, spammy. with very G -g commercial intent money keyword anchors yeah it just screams spam mm -hmm. um how often do you go into the link detox screener to actually look at these sorts of sites one at a time? Pretty rarely, if, right? If, if all the technical metrics are so so bad already, if we have super high risk and a power trust of zero, then the risk of disavowing them and losing something is close to a zero because we already know that these links didn't help. So worst case, they will even hurt us. So, and these, I would, you know, recommend to disavow in bulk, especially if you're, you know, have a drop in rankings, then you can later still undisavow them. You would, may find, you know, one or two ways say, oh my God, I, I, I know this website. I've, I've, I've spoken to the owner. I've, I've given an interview and the website is just weak. It's not spammy. So you can always undisavow, but uh, with uh, 208 domains, yeah, and then 500 links that don't look, you know, any good at all. You know, we're a bird on page 14 of some uh, scraper or some Polish website, Bodani, Adresh, whatever that means, with English anchor text. Now, I would just, you know, say uh, to, to follow what Matt Cutt said many years ago, use a machete, not a scalpel when, when doing your link cleanup. A machete, yeah, yeah. A machete, machete, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And uh, this has uh, proven right over all these years in, in, in any kind of uh, situation where we had a penalty. So I always give this advice for those cases where we are not sure if we have a penalty. And essentially, everyone who experiences a drop in rankings for a certain number of keywords or pages is probably tackled by the uh, lot smarter Penguin 4 or, or real-time Penguin algorithm, where Google like uh, you know, in 2010 with a Google Caffeine update, with a Penguin real-time update in 2016, they 
they managed to get their infrastructure in place to calculate all the spam signals as well. Just like the good signals, they could calculate the spam signals in real time, at crawl time. And um, you better want those links out of the way to help you because it's all about the balance. If you have a lot of bad links uh, pulling you back, there's no point in actually building great links because the the balance isn't there. The, it's yeah. like a, 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 the wrong balance in the end. Yeah, so, so at that point, uh, going back to what I was saying earlier about having this parallel track of cleaning up the, the mess and concurrently doing some virtuous link building, maybe we should talk a little bit more about that because uh, it, it, to us, it seems pretty straightforward how to do that. But yeah. how would a site like a life insurance site yeah. get... Uh, really virtuous uh, backlinks from high trust websites. It's it's quite tricky. If you're if you're if this isn't your world, uh, you're you're not an expert in this. It might yeah. seem like a very daunting task. So let's talk about that for a little bit. Okay. Okay. Now so I'll, I'll give an example. Uh, actually, from life insurance, it's not even my example. Uh, I I know about it from from my. Uh, from an old friend, let's just say, who is in, in pretty famous in the SEO space, and his first name is Neil. So I'm not <laughs> going to say his last name, but you probably know who I'm talking about. And this guy loves to cut corners, mm -hmm. loves to cut corners. Uh, he's he, he, he prides himself on that. So he found for a site called lifeinsure.com, which was a client of his back uh, in the day when he had all these dig accounts that were in the top 10. Uh, so remember back when dig was a thing, D I G G. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course. What big, big, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, it still exists. It still exists as a shadow of what it was. Um, yeah, I don't even know who owns it these days, but so he had a lot of powerful accounts on dig. Dig was the Reddit of the time, even though Reddit did exist, it wasn't as powerful as dig. And what he did was really clever. It was a, a shortcut. He found an article that was 20 things he didn't know about death. And he lopped off one of the items and made it 19 things you probably didn't know about death. And he just paraphrased the article. And then he, he um, published it on the site, but not in a public place on the blog, because who wants to buy life insurance once they read an article <laughs> that says something like, after being decapitated, you're still conscious for 15 to 20 seconds. That was the sort of stuff that was in this list, in this listicle. So he submitted it to Dig uh, from one of his uh, power account, power user accounts, and it went kind of viral. Got a ton of links, and he <clears throat> he got the client to rank on page one for life insurance just from this one campaign. Life oh. insurance page one, and no one else that was a tiny little insurance brokerage was on page one. It was all the big guys, Geico, MetLife, mm -hmm. State Farm, those sorts of big sites. And then this tiny little lifeinsure.com. Pretty cool. A uh, little sketchy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's important to create content that isn't just skyscraper content better than everything else out there, but isn't just a rehash of somebody else's content. It, it really is remarkable and and link worthy because you've put original thought into it and and uh, a unique angle or hook and just it, yeah you don't want to just rip off other people's stuff but with that said it shows the power and the importance of having a linkable asset and that linkable asset wasn't even available anywhere on the site you could not find it by clicking around. In other words, all day long, you would click around. You'd never find it because it was an orphan page. Mm -hmm. They didn't want users to find it. So only through uh, the inbound links could you find that uh, that article. Did oh, wonders for the client for years until they redesigned yeah. the site, didn't know what they were doing. And then I they tanked their rank. No, they, oh, the, the page, went, uh, this page stayed up, but they didn't know what they were uh, doing in terms of redesign work. And the person oh. who... Oh. Did the coding messed up the SEO, mm -hmm. and I wasn't working with them, but I I, yeah. I knew about it. Pretty uh, pretty oh, interesting story. So that just exemplifies the 
the importance of having high value, remarkable linkable assets. All it can take is one piece, one content piece, an infographic, a personality test or quiz, a, a, uh, a free download of some sort. Uh, that's another thing too, is I created a, a WordPress plugin for SEO way long ago, like 2007. And that became the most linked to and most valuable uh, uh, content marketing campaign that my previous agency, Net Concepts, had ever done. We got all this link authority just from uh, providing this plugin called SEO Title Tag that offered things no other plugin had, like a mass edit interface for editing a whole bunch of title tags across your blog all at once on one screen. It was really innovative for the time. So we got a lot of links, and that allowed us to rank for a lot of different keywords. And then we passed on some of that juice to some of our clients. We had this technology platform called Gravity Stream, which I had invented that was a reverse proxy based uh, uh, platform. And we would send so much link juice to those uh, Gravity Stream uh, proxies because we had so much. <laughs> we got links from uh, what back in the day, remember when you could still get uh, page rank scores from the uh, toolbar server? Yeah, yeah. We, I got links from the from PR8 home pages and stuff so we got lots of juice that we passed on to these clients and then we got paid on a cost per uh or you know pay, uh, pay for performance basis cost per click oh wow and we would make we, we made we made millions off of off of that technology platform that's pretty yeah, cool. i can imagine i can imagine yeah i i was looking for you know that piece of content where i would try to send links to and what i found was one article from one year ago, um, a complete guide for seniors over 75 in regards to life insurance. And the next one here is from July about uh, coronavirus again, how buying senior life insurance has changed. And I'm not sure if... You see, this is, this is just a wall of text. Yeah. This is unremarkable content and it's not link worthy. Yeah. So a linkable asset history. by definition is linkable. It's link worthy. It deserves links organically. Just somebody coming across it would be compelled to link to it. There's no way that you're going to get links to this page without begging for them. Yeah. So think in terms of like, how can I be outside of the box in my link building? If you're creating for, okay. So uh, there was an article about uh, baby boomers. So if you go hit the back button. Yeah. Here, uh, yeah. So oh. the oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah the life insurance for seniors over seventy five. So this is a way that I kind of brainstorm. Is uh, you know the concept of R and D isn't just research and development. It's also rip off and duplicate. So, <laughs> but with uh, you know just using it as inspiration, not like literally ripping off and duplicating. So open a new tab, and let's do this Google search: site colon buzzfeed dot com. And uh, let's add the keyword boomer, because this is, a, this is something that I know that um, you know, ha having adult kids, uh, if you can believe it, I, I know <laughs> okay, I'm, boomer. I, I don't look. Yeah. OK, boomer. Exactly. So if uh, if you have adult kids, you know that no matter what your age, I'm not even I'm not even 50 yet soon, but I, I'm not 50, yet, but I'm a boomer, according to. Uh, all, all the younger generation. Like, what the heck? Yeah. It's like, OK, Boomer is just this mo totally dismissive thing. It's a hashtag. It's viral, etc. So if you were to create content around OK, Boomer and find, uh, let's say, TikTok um, viral little ditties that have that hashtag and you created the ultimate kind of listicle of the best stuff from TikTok that are that's boomer related or you explained to actual baby boomers what okay boomer means and and how it's being used <laughs> on people that are you know, young enough still to be your children and yeah. Yeah, it's pretty funny so you could create some very funny content and that has a uh, viral potential to it 
we're not trying to go viral. We're trying to create something link worthy, but if we aim yeah. higher, we'll do better. So try yeah. for virality and hopefully we'll just create something link worthy. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll hit it out of the park and have it go viral, but that's, uh, that's kind of like winning the lottery. So, um, if you just start becoming familiar with this, okay, boomer kind of trend or w other, uh, trending topics. So I like to not only do uh, a site colon search on Buzzfeed and, and also viral Nova and, and upworthy and distractify and board Panda and all these other viral sites to see what yeah. kinds of, uh, headlines they're publishing with, let's say boomer in, in the, in the title. I also want to see what's, uh, going viral in uh, a tool like, uh, like BuzzSumo mm -hmm. and also using, uh, a tool like SparkToro, which is from my, uh, co-author Rand Fishkin. Yeah. That tool is amazing. So you can see what, um, uh, hashtags people are using who are either visiting a certain website or following a certain social account or, uh, subscribe to a certain YouTube channel. It is amazing what you can, uh, the, the kind of Intel that you can glean from, from Spark Toro. Uh, so you, you're getting all this Intel and then you're creating something that has a hook to it, whether it is a humor hook, like I was describing with OK Boomer, or it's a utility hook or a controversy hook. Right. Notice we didn't even talk about U.S. politics <laughs> in this, <laughs> in this webinar. At but, least not in public. <laughs> yeah, but boy, is yeah, exactly. We we did before we started re hit, uh, went, uh, hit record. So there's the controversy hook, which is very uh, effective, and the newsworthy hook. Problem with that is you don't want to get too ephemeral because something that is a thing now, like. TikTok may get bought or whatever, or Trump is going to you know, shut down TikTok in the US or whatever, whatever the news of the moment is, yeah. is a problem because who's going to link to that in six months? Yeah. It's, it's old news. So you want to create something more evergreen. So you've got a uh, newsworthy hook, utility hook, uh, a controversy hook, humor hook, uh, et cetera. So you got these different hooks that you can choose from if your brand is super stodgy and conservative and you're not going to be humorous because that's just not who you are. Well, first yeah. of all, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, that's okay. There's other ways that we can create linkable assets and have something that's, that's worthy, right? That's remarkable using Seth Godin's definition of remarkable from the purple cow. It's just worthy of remark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll check this out. Um, so, so I would recommend that this, uh, this life insurance site try to publish maybe one, two or three pieces of content a month that hit that threshold, that standard of link worthiness. Mm -hmm. Currently they're not even doing one and, uh, one don't just month, rely yeah. on, yeah, one, uh, like one a month would be a bare, bare minimum. Like I would hope for at least three and maybe one of those three is actually good because you're yeah. learning. You, you know, yeah. if, if you're, if you're not winning, you're not losing. If you're not winning, you're learning, right? So you, this is just an iterative learning process until you hit it. And, and while you're learning through this process, you're going to need to not just rely on people happening to discover that you have a blog on on this LifeNet site you're yeah. going to have to do outreach you're going to have to use pitch box and have a compelling pitch that's not hey i've got a guest post to contribute to your website and yeah that, i hit delete every time i get those nobody yeah. likes those you have to be yeah. creative you have to be thoughtful you have to be personalized you can totally do this with PitchBox, but you have to really up your your game in terms of the strategy behind the outreach. But uh, like link yeah. research tools, LRT plus PitchBox is the one-two punch. It is the magic sauce, secret sauce, magic formula, magic pill, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It is the thing that makes all the difference to your link profile. Doing one without the other 
is only half of the equation. Yeah. And I, I, I know you're good friends with Pitchbox. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mikey and Alex, of course. We were the first to integrate them in 2014 already. Yeah. And uh, maybe to mention, you know, when it comes to actually using link research tools with Pitchbox for the link building part, um, we're now only looking at their website at the lifenetinsurance.com. But for a competitive research, we would do, and we had that in a previous site clinic where a comparison of different sites uh, uh, was shown and where we would look at actual competitors that are ranking for life insurance or maybe life insurance for seniors to, to take a, you know, a longer tail phrase and then look at those websites that rank already and then what type of websites are linking to those websites and then try to you know get links there because that's the next problem you want to figure out where to get the links from and this is where the link research in link research tools comes from actually the yeah. whole suit is not just for the audit that we just did for the cycling to fix that website is to find actual websites to get links from and um, yeah. We had all these tools for so many years here. Uh, oops, here when you look at this, uh, we got a yeah, competitive landscape analyzer. Exactly, the landscape analyzer, keyword analyzer, competitive link detox, of course, but also the links tool thief, the SERP research tool, come back links tool, the missing links tool, they're all there. And we haven't even started talking about all these different methods, but let's just sum summarize that this type of work, the link prospecting is the first part trying to find where others got their links. Um, something that is fairly new or not often done is then making sure that these links won't hurt me. Just yeah. because a website is linking to someone else doesn't mean if they link to me, it will help me. In fact, it could hurt me. And this is where our link simulator or LORT uh, is the abbreviation that we used uh, for yeah. years is yeah, to Lord. simulate <laughs> Lord, yeah, is to, is to simulate the risk that that link would have if we had it already. So we have a, 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 a step in between where we can pass through all these link opportunities, the prospects, and decide if we actually want to spend time building a link there because of time or resources or money or writing content, whatever investment. Oh, so valuable. So yeah. valuable because if you just, if you invest all this time and it actually is a worthless link or even worse one that yeah. uh, drags down your site's uh, link profile, yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to you don't want to waste your time like that. I did see a question in uh, oh. the chat that asked if your software fixes the issues it finds from a link detox perspective. Yes, it does in this in the re regard to you upload the disavow file that uh, LRT, uh, that Link Detox is generating from your analysis and hitting the fix button on all these different things. And then the, you, you let Google do its magic. So you have to upload the disavow file, but that's a two minute yeah. job. 99% yeah. of the effort is handled by, uh, by Link Detox and LRT. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, these fix buttons here are essentially shortcuts that use a lot of technical details and experience that we have to let you disavow and, and take out problems in the hundreds like we did. Of course, right. you can still go down. You can go six. one at a time and use the screener and see each one and decide, oh, yeah, this looks like spam. And then uh, add that to the disavow list, which yeah. is just the click of a button. And then the disavow list is generated by the tool, which you then download and then yeah. upload to your Google Search Console. But yeah, you can do it manually one at a time uh, within the screener. But uh, yeah, you totally want to trust uh, uh, Christoph's algorithms and just hit the fix button. <laughs> Yeah, for most of them, though. I mean, sometimes, you know, this active growth, I've no idea what that website is about, but um, we see here, for instance, this is the screener. We see a low detox risk. Um, we see that this website supposedly linked to us, but usually we should see a highlight like here. So this is a little bit confusing for me. There is a link that is not it's visible. Hidden. It's yeah, hidden. So I would actually disavow that. Because yeah. I don't like hidden links. Yeah. And neither does Google. 
See, but that's you. In a little bit more shadier environment, maybe someone will <laughs> these <laughs> yeah. comments and links. <laughs> yeah, per, no, but, uh, pearly white hat, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Leonard Robbins, yeah, another comment spam link here, no follow. Where Lenny was, Leonard still. Um, nah, I would rate this down and, and, and disavow this, at least on the page. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and of course, we have clients that go through all these links here one by one, like I just do. And uh, what you don't see right now is my hands are here on the keyboard going left, right, um, and uh, AWSD, the, the gamer keys uh, to shoot. So I can always, you know, go here with uh, two, two, two fingers through them fairly quick. But still, you that, that's not a, a very pleasant um, um uh, work for some. Oh yeah, even comment spam on Backlinko. Hmm. <laughs> wow, uh, that's quite meta, right? Where you have yeah, that is pretty meta. Lenny commenting, and then Brian saying thank you, Lenny. Um, was that really Brian who said thank you, Lenny? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it was his VA. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah, and uh, with that, I think we, we, we can close this case already. It's uh, yet another site where we have a lot of work in place. And the, I've, I've noticed this over all these months. Um, the websites that we get here are those that actually have a lot of different um, vectors to work on, you know, be it the content, be it the technical part, being the link, and, and not just the link audit, because everything we just talked about that we just saw is that the link building that was done for the site is fairly outdated and actually risky. And I wouldn't be surprised if this website would have a penalty specifically for the keywords that it is trying to target. So maybe not life net insurance solutions, but here for for life insurance, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure just from the yeah, link. So quality. you can have a keyword level penalty. So you might yeah. rank for some keywords that are non-brand and others you don't. And yeah. it's because the, either an algorithm or uh, a person has hit the big red button. And yeah. it's not just on across the board on every single keyword on every single page of your site. So it can be quite granular. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think to sum it up, before you have an actual link target, you know, something that is link worthy, where someone would link to for uh, at least for money. Don't even get started because nobody is interested in how buying senior life insurance has changed, except, well, I guess the, the, the insurance agents. And and the, the other article I found here is a, a uh, how to buy life insurance for parents and grandparents. Is that, what is AARP? American is that Association a for Retired Persons. Oh, okay. It's a so it's an association. Pretty, okay. Pretty okay. pretty well known in the state. Okay, okay, okay. Burl life and two easy steps. That's one article per year. <laughs> They're on a roll. <laughs> no, no, no. But that needs more investment, I guess. Uh and in this space, insurance, as we said it in the beginning. Not an easy game to play. Uh the yeah. competition there is fierce for for decades, you have to say. Yeah, yeah. So, so to sum up, you got to work not just on cleaning up the bad links. You've got to work on creating link-worthy content, linkable assets. You need to clean up your conversion leaks, like the stuff that is um, lack of social proof, too many form fields to fill out, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. You need. Uh, you you need quality content, main site content, not just blog content, but main site content for like your services pages and so forth that will help you to rank for the the more competitive money keywords that you're after. Because a blog post is probably not the ideal first entry point into your site. You're not going to get um, a, as much conversion that way. And then you want to have... Uh, all the technical issues addressed, page speed, core web vitals, all that, um, canonicals, duplicate content, mitigation, 
um, href lang tags if you're an international uh, site, et cetera, et cetera. All, yeah. all the technical stuff needs to be addressed. So it's content, it's the site architecture, and it's links. So those are the three pillars. And what I noticed uh, looking some parameters before, yeah, this is a uh, run on HubSpot, which, you know, they are quite popular with their free CRM or we're popular with a free CRM, but that naturally limits what you can do with a website and, and on so many levels and could be a problem by itself for that yeah. website just to adopt. I mean, uh, maybe valid reasons to go there, but um, not necessarily a reason to stick there. If you want to play the SEO game big in, um, in the insurance space. Yeah, yeah, you definitely need the right tools. And besides using a tool like uh, Link Research Tools, you want to have a good CRM platform like WordPress, which has so many plugins to choose from. Not that you want to use them all because that's going to slow your page speed down. But you'll have a lot of uh, great plugins to choose from. You have all sorts of flexibility and capabilities. You know, if you had a Shopify blog on the Shopify platform, you wouldn't even be able to have categories. I should just blow my mind. What? You can't have you can't have categories. Category pages are not a thing in the Shopify blog platform. So if you have a Shopify e-commerce oh. site and you go with Shopify for the blog because you don't uh -huh. want to have a subdomain for because yeah. that's you're gonna be forced to do if you have WordPress as your blog platform. Mm-hmm. You're going to end up with uh, either a subdomain with WordPress or you're going to end up with a Shopify blog <laughs> on the main site, on the main subdomain, and then uh -huh. you don't even have category support and a whole bunch of other features are missing that are pretty It reminds standard. me about Toby, uh, the founder of uh, Shopify, recently asked on Twitter if there is anything that uh, you should improve, that they should improve for their SEO. And he got, I think, back uh, a dozens or even hundreds of tweets um, that he dismissed partially because of them being SEO voodoo. But when I hear that you cannot, <laughs> cannot even have, you know, a properly structured block, that, that rings a bell. And I'm, uh, I'm an investor in Shopify too. So maybe it was looking deeper into that one. However, I, I read this morning or was it yesterday that they finally implemented hreflang for international sites so that you can actually have uh, a German section in your shop that is marked up properly for German. You know, the way oh, good. it works like... It's about time. Five, five, <laughs> I, th that was my question. Five or six years or how long we, we, we have this HREF length thing. Right. Um, yeah, they're, they're on the cutting edge time. over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, Stefan, I say thank you very much for uh, being here for doing this uh, for one and a half hours it's been a pleasure it was my it was my pleasure i, I loved it uh, anytime we get to riff and and rant it's it's always fun i gotta have you back on marketing speak yeah. On, on oh yeah podcast. i look so forward to, to that this. i look forward to that one all right all you guys thank you very much out there for watching this either live or and then later on youtube and if you want your own website audited make sure you submit it on our website when you sign up you get an email asking you for that reminding you about it and another one reminding you about it so you cannot forget about that and i look forward to your feedback thank you very much bye bye <laughs>